The smaller loop inside this nested loop configuration is usually referred to as inner loop. Every time this outer loop steps inside, it would restart this inner loop counter to zero again, forcing it to print high message three times, which means this outer loop would cause this message to be repeated three times again and again three consecutive times. That's why this message would be printed out nine times in total. But let's trace this program step by step and watch our variables i and j as we go. Starting with the outer loop, i is initialized to 0, setting its value to 0, and then the next thing that happens is we check if i is less than 3. In this case it is, so it steps inside and goes into this inner loop. What happens now is that j gets initialized to 0, getting that value and then we can check if j is less than 3 and it is so we step inside this inner loop printing out the statement hi and then we reach the end of the inner loop so we go back up and check and increment j by 1 changing its value from 0 to 1 and then once we increment it we check that j is still less than 3 which in this case it is so we step inside the loop again and we print out another high and we reach the end of the inner loop. So we go back up and add one more to j. Then we check if j is still less than 3 which it is. So we step inside the loop again and we print out high one more time. This time we reach the end of the loop. We go back up and increment by 1 making it 3. So when we check that j is less than 3 this time, it's no longer true. So that just jumps all the way to the end of this inner loop and continues from there. And since there's nothing after this inner loop, so we reach this closing bracket of the outer loop. Which means we go back up and we increment i this time, changing i from 0 to 1. So we check if i is still less than 3, which it is in this case, and that means we step into the loop again. Now that we have stepped into this inner loop, we will see this inner loop all over again. So we start from beginning, including the initialization step, which makes j to 0. So we check if j is less than 3, which it is, and then we start printing again. So hi gets printed out and then we reach the closing brackets of our inner loop. So we go back up and increment j going from 0 to 1 and then checking if it's less than 3, which it is. So we print out high again and then we end the inner loop again. Go back up, increment it to 2, check it if it's less than 3, which it is. So we print out high again. And then we repeat this until we get j++ to make our value 3. So when we check if j is less than 3, which in this case it's not, we don't print anything and we skip to the closing bracket of the inner loop. And then we move on. We don't have anything else to do. So we reach the closing bracket of the outer loop, but i is still less than 3. So we go back up, we increment i, make it to 2. And we check if i is less than 3 or not, which in this case it is. So we step into the inner loop again, initializing j again to 0. And then because 0 is less than 3, so we start printing all over again. And this would force our inner loop to go over and over its normal cycle and print out high 3 times again. Now after the inner loop reaches the value of 3, this condition becomes false and we skip to the end and we then reach the closing bracket of our outer loop and we go back up and increment i making it 3 this time, which no longer is less than 3, so it doesn't even step into this inner loop anymore and it just simply jumps to the closing bracket of the outer loop and the program ends. Now if you have noticed, i changed from 0 to 3 and every time i had a value, j change from 0 to 3. This is the idea behind nested loops, where you could use i and j interchangeably inside the inner loop in many occasions. Let's see how we could use nested loops to navigate through a two-dimensional array. 
going back to our two dimensional grid here we want to see how we can go through every single number inside this two dimensional array we already know that if we wanted to go through every item in a single row we can simply write a loop for that this loop for example would go through every single item in row with index 0 which means it would count all these numbers and because it's adding them to total now by the end of this loop we would have the value of total equals to the sum of the items in that row if we wanted to add all the other rows we could simply write a loop for each row the only difference is the index here matching the index of the row that we are interested in so once we run this code it would go through every single row and then every single item in that row and add them up until we get the total value we want however if you noticed all these loops are almost identical except for that index which happens to change from 0 to 3 that's look like something we could use a loop for if we surround one of those loops with another loop and use its loop counter instead of this index it would do the exact same thing that this code is doing so if we replace this code with something that looks like this where we can have this nested loop configuration here one that uses the loop counter i and the other that uses the loop counter j and if we try to access the grades of i and j this would eventually add all the items in the two dimensional array so running this code the inner loop would go through every single item in a row and then the outer loop would make sure that we switch to the next row and then the inner loop would go through every item in it again and in that way we can guarantee that by the end of the code we have seen every single item in that grid and because every time we are adding the grades into our variable total by the end of this nested loop configuration total would have the sum of every single number in this two dimensional array perfect